This is No One From Nowhere, and you are, and I am, a Spirit of God. Today I want to talk to you about solar gods, the Anunnaki, and what they won't tell you. Romans 9, 1, 1. I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. Remember, all roads lead to the Anunnaki and the Mesopotamian civilization. Here is a short list of other solar deities that came after the Anunnaki Utu Shemesh. Odin, Buddha, Dionysus, Krishna, Indra, Attis, Apollo, Kamash, Friar, Adad, Helios, Cadmus, Andonis, Hepa, Tammuz, Ra, Horus, Mithra, whom Constantine, the inventor of Christianity, worshipped. He worshipped Mithra and before Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the modern day solar deity. Remember, you cannot reproduce a replica of any original because it's the original. All these gods were born by a virgin on December 25th, dead for three days and resurrected and had 12 disciples. Remember, one thing is clear and positive that all these other gods are, are mentioned after Utu Shemesh. The Anunnaki are mentioned in the oldest books known to man and civilization, the Unima Elish and the Epic of Gilgamesh. All these gods have the same thing in common, the same solar accounts. And today I'm going to talk about two of those, Mithra and Andonis, whom Constantine, the inventor of Christianity, worshipped Mithra and not Jesus Christ. First a joke. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. <laughs> Remember, I am the messenger and not the message. This is out of the Woman's Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets. Mithra, Persian savior whose cult was a leading rival of Christianity in Rome and more successful than Christianity for the first four centuries of the Christian era in 307 AD. The emperor officially designated Mithra as the protector of the empire. Christians copied many details of the Mithraic religion, mystery religion, explaining the resemblance later with their favorite argument that the devil had anticipated the true faith by intimidating or imitating it before Christ's birth. Some resemblances between Christianity and Mithraism were so close that even St. Augustine declared the priest of Mithra worship the same deity as he did. Mithra was born on the 25th of December called the birthday of the unconquered sun, which was finally taken over by Christians in the 4th century AD as the birthday of Christ. Some said Mithra sprang from an insidious union between the sun god and his own mother, just as Jesus, who was God, was born of the mother of God, some claim Mithra's mother was a mortal virgin. Others said Mithra had no mother, but was miraculously born of a female rock, the Petra Generix, fertilized by the Heavenly Father's phallic lightning. Mithra's birth was witnessed by shepherds and by magi who brought gift to his sacred birth cave of the rock. Mithra performed the usual assortment of miracles, raising the dead, healing the sick, 
making the blind see and the lame walk, and casting out devils. His triumph and ascension to heaven were celebrated at the spring equinox, or Easter, when the sun rises towards its climax. Before returning to heaven, Mithra celebrated a last supper with his twelve disciples, who represented the twelve signs of the zodiac. In memory of this, his worship partook of a sacramental meal of bread marked with a cross. Andonis was born at Bethlehem in the same sacred cave that Christian later claimed as a birthplace of Jesus Christ. He was a son of the Virgin Mira, a temple woman, or Herodual, identified with Mary by early Christian, who called Jesus' mother Mira of the Sea. Mira was a symbol of the Lord's death in both pagan and Christian traditions. The Magi Papri said Jesus and Andonis also shared the same name magic. Andonia was the highest god having the true name that could work miracles. Centuries later, Christian authorities declared that Andona was a demon. Utu Shemesh. Utu is a Sumerian god of the sun and divine justice. He is the son of the moon god Nana and the fertility goddess Ningal in the Sumerian tradition, but was known as Shemesh to the Akkadians who claimed Anu or Enlil as his father. In the Sumerian tradition, he is the twin brother of Inanna, the goddess of war, love, and sexuality, and brother of Arish Kigal, queen of the dead, and Ishkur, also known as Adad, the god of storms. He is one of the most important deities in the Mesopotamian pantheon and is attested to in the earlier Sumerian writings. He is usually depicted as an old man with a long beard whose shoulders emanate rays of light, but is also represented as a solar disk, as a disk with wings. This is very similar to Santa Claus. The famous code of Hammurabi addresses Shemesh by name and claims it was Shemesh who provided humanity with law. As a note, I want to note that Moses' laws are very similar, and some people note that they could have been plagiarized or copied from Shemesh. I do not think so, but many scholars do. In Sumer, his cult centers were at Larsa and Eridu, and to the north in Akkad. He was famously venerated at Sapur. His temples were known as Ibabar, or the White House, or Shining House, which name attached itself to the god as Babar, the Illuminating One. And the White House is where presidents of the U.S. live. Very similar here. Utu Shemesh's wife was Sarida, the goddess of the dawn, who by the Old Babylonian period was a patroness of the Natatu. These were cloistered women who had dedicated themselves to the divine, similar in ways to certain orders of Catholic nuns in the present day. The Natatu were routinely associated with Utu Shemesh because their cloister was attached to his temples but they actually worshipped and served his wife, Sarida. His symbol of the solar disks show a circle with four points protruding toward the cardinal directions with four wavy lines emanating diagonally outward from between them, representing the power, light, warmth, and reach of the sun. And I also want to point out that there's vibrations and frequencies representing here. And we'll get into this at the end. 
2 Peter 1 1 same precious faith we have this faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior God of just justice as the Sun sailing across the sky could obviously see everything that transpired on earth Utu Shemesh was not only the bringer of light but the arbiter of justice Orientalist Jeremy Black notes that Utu Shemesh represents the brilliant light of the sun which returns every day to illuminate the life of mankind as well as giving beneficial warmth which causes plants to grow. The lights of the sun was thought to be able to penetrate and pierce every level on earth even to the underworld and illuminate the human heart, or the solar plexus. There was nothing that Utu Shemesh did not see. Matthew 24.30 Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Every morning Utu Shemesh emerged from the doors of heaven in the east. Two lesser gods swung wide these doors for him as came forth and stepped into his chariot to ride across the sky towards the west, where two other gods opened their gates for him to enter. And as a note, this may be a stargate. He then rested in the underworld until he was awakened by his wife at dawn and went again to his chariot. The entrance to the Mesopotamian underworld was thought to lie in the west, quite close to the western gates of the sun god, and in some eras, it was believed that Utu Shemesh descended into the underworld at dusk to judge the dead. John 14.6 Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Still, since the sun could illuminate even the darkest places, it seems there was hope that Utu Shemesh would reach into the nether world and touch the souls of the departed. Like his father Nana, Utu Shemesh then served as a kind of bridge between the living and those who had passed on to the other side. It was believed that food and water and other offerings should continue to be brought to the dead because they continued to exist simply without bodies and still needed substance. However, Utu Shemesh's judgment of them went. It was clear the souls still existed to be judged, and so the living continued to honor them with offerings. If the dead were worthy of the notice by the sun god, mortals could take the time to honor and remember them as well. Utu Shemesh is always depicted as a kind benefactor, freely giving the gifts of life. Utu Shemesh in myth. Many of the myths featuring Utu Shemesh emphasize his, ki his kindness and generosity. In the myth of Etna, the hero petitions Shemesh for aid in helping his wife conceive at the same time that an eagle and a serpent are feuding over ownership of a popular tree and also asking for help. The God takes care of each request justly and carefully in the same way as in the Epic of Gilgamesh. He helps the hero conqueror, the demon of the cedar forest, Humababa. This myth highlights a central aspect of the personality of Utu Shemesh, his involvement in the most intimate aspects of one's life. Jeremy Black comments on this after listing the God's aspects regarding the sun and justice, writing, A third aspect of Utu was his direct interest in the affairs of mankind, one of the early legendary kings of Uruk is described as the son of Utu in the composition called the Sumerian's King's List. 
and Utu acted as a special protector of some of the later heroic kings of the city. For instance, Gilgamesh. In the Babylonian Epic of Gilgamesh, Shemesh helps the hero against the monstrous guardian of the cedar forest, Humbaba. In the Sumerian poem, Dumuzi's Dream, Utu helps Dumuzi to escape from the Gala demons who have come to take him to the underworld. Mark 3.11 And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. At one point in the Epic of Gilgamesh, when Gilgamesh and Enkidu are setting out for the cedar forest, Gilgamesh says to his comrade, Where is the man who can clamor to heaven? Only the gods live forever in glorious Shemesh. But as for us men, our days are number, our occupations are a breath of wind. The hopes and dreams, the aspirations and struggles of humanity were considered little more than a vapor. But Utu Shemesh was eternal and he would come to continue on long after any individual's life and was only a memory. Although his name was forgotten as Christianity gained acceptance, the vision of a loving son of a god, the light of the world, was not. In this picture, Utu Shemesh is, an, is holding an ant which means he is eternal, the infinite God, which is immortal. He will not die, so he may more than likely still be in charge of the affairs of mankind and of the sun race. Also, it appears the symbol is of the sun and frequency. Is there a frequency of the sun? that not only illuminates rays of life, but also frequency and vibration, just like Tesla spoke of. This could illuminate to our third eye, and in my opinion, it is. But I can definitely not prove this, but it is something for further investigation. John 8.12 Jesus said, I am the light of the world, John 9, 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And Jesus said, the truth will set you free. I leave you with a joke. Why didn't the son go to college? Because it already had a million degrees. I love you so much and so does God. And you are and I am a spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen.